It's 2 o'clock here on 90.3 KEXP. I'm Stevie Zoom with you for one more hour. Right now, though, we are ready and happy to have with us for some live music in our studio. From New York, freelance whales are here. To my left is Judah. That's me. And uh, could you do a quick introduction of everybody that you've got here? You've got everybody and uh, yes. all the instruments. It's really cool. We're all in a big circle. Here I am. I'll say at like 12 o'clock. <laughs> and then 1 o'clock is Tim Cronin. And then... Just to his left is Chuck Chris, and then on the drums, Jake Hyman, Kevin Reed playing mostly mandolin today, and the lovely Dara Seller playing mostly harmonium today. Excellent. Well, thank you all for being here. If you're ready for a couple of songs, that'd be great. Sure thing. Two. Oh, my eyes are open so wide I can see the stars connected in the sky. And them all's running through the emptiness they spring These melted creatures bringing meaning from afar Like gems on pillows Oh Thank you. 
It's 90.3 KEXP here in Seattle. You're listening to live music from Freelance Wales. They're playing this evening at Chop Suey. And again, thanks so much for being here this afternoon. This brand new album, uh, your second album, Deluvia. And the, uh, just to let people know, uh, you guys have been around for a few years, and the debut album came out in 09 called Weather Veins. And now a few years later, you have the second album. Is this kind of uh, the difference from the first album to the second album, just kind of all that collective as a band kind of finding themselves and kind of growing and defining what you're going to be doing? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of that. Like, the, the truth of the matter is that when, when a lot of the material for the first record got put together, um, it was kind of born out of, you know, kind of fewer minds in smaller spaces and bedrooms working with computers. Um, and then this new record is like a whole slew of minds with, you know, minds that are attached to limbs and limbs that have been playing music together now for years and, and also a little bit more bionic bionic limbs in terms of the amount of you know technology and, and synthesizers and stuff like that we've taken on over the past few years so yeah I think the new record's kind of reflective of um, the fact that this group of people has been you know essentially living together and touring together for the last three years or so. Yeah as you say yeah, everybody's kind of together now for a few years and so everybody's probably a little more confident and a little more uh, you know got some ideas to put together for songs so uh, arrangements probably uh, take a little time and a lot of effort from everybody's part to, uh, to come together. Absolutely. Yeah. Have uh, from the very beginning with all the instrumentation. I mean, the you know, it's a great vocal harmony mix that's going on here with everybody on a lot of instrumentation. Was that kind of the idea that you had from the the very beginning? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think. Well, not really. I think that may have evolved actually out of the fact that we were playing a lot publicly, and um, you know, we needed to use our voices a lot in order to get people's attention. Because, like, you know, if you're playing, you know, on subway platforms like we did for a long time, you, you can only make so much noise with your little acoustic instruments and stuff like that. So it's kind of more, yeah, coming from that necessity to kind of shout at people publicly to yeah. sort of get their attention. Yeah, you guys started off by playing, uh, as you just mentioned, uh, subway platforms and those public places where, you know, 90 plus percent of the people are just moving on to what they've got to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's kind of a way of um, finding out what you're going to do, but then also trying to uh, attract attention. Mm -hmm. So uh, just kind of things evolved from there. And uh, now it's uh, touring. And so if you still go back and do some of those kinds of things for fun? It playing sounds like fun. In, play, playing in those uh, public places? Not really. Not we really. We haven't in a while because the last time that we did it, I think it ended up looking like a little bit of a publicity sp stunt. Uh. And... Um, it's unfortunate because, you know, we did it from, like, a very pure place originally. And I think we could maybe do it again at some point. But the fact of the matter is we were doing it at the time out of necessity and out of practicality to get people's attention, to get people to come out to shows and stuff like that. So I don't think it would be as genuine as it was originally because we were genuinely doing it not to be cool or to say we did it, but because it was, like, a really effective way of, like, meeting people and making fans and, like, meeting people that worked at record companies and all this other kind of stuff so it had its it kind of had its moment as this sort of practical thing in our band's evolution i think we're really happy and thankful for it but i think we'd be more interested in figuring out like what the analog of that right now for us would be yeah. as opposed to just doing that again now i say new york but home for you is, is this mostly uh you folks live in, in queens i'm told Doris is from Queens. Yep. Doris is from Queens. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. She was born and raised the, there. The rest of the guys live in Brooklyn. Yeah. Ah, all about. <laughs> here it comes, the Brooklyns. Some Manhattanites in there as well. Okay. But, well, it's um, cool that somebody's here from Queens. That's, that's cool. <laughs> and it's nice that on the, on the new record, uh, Doris sings a uh, lead on that song, which is getting a lot of attention with listeners to hear uh, the voice come through on that. There's a lot of, uh, uh, a few themes on the new record of kind of exploration and science fiction. Mm -hmm. Was that uh, um, kind of a conscious effort developing the record, or it just sort of came about? Well, I think a lot of us, like, you know, when you're making music and you're trying to make a song or, God forbid, a record that, that's about something, you have to kind of go to the places, the things that you know and the things that you love. And, um, and you know, maybe even things that are pertinent to society, <laughs> you know? So for us, I think... There's, you know, it, that's kind of where all the confluence of all those different things came in. Um, our love of, you know, science fiction and fantasy, both in like film and literature and television and like scientific education television. You know, I feel like 
Carl Sagan's Cosmos is like sort of like the perfect reference point for something that um, it's sort of like this uh, spiritual kind of compass or something like that for this new record because what it was is it's like kind of very informational and um, like very um, scientific but also extremely emotional um, and it's sort of about finding the interplay between those things and that's like the kind of guy that Carl was and like he wasn't just this bag of facts like you know spewing facts under the world it was always very like emotional and heartfelt and um, about humility like ultimately like looking into the cosmos was a way of like achieving some sort of humility in, in saying like no actually we're we're extremely small and we may be like nothing at all really and um, so I think that's the record that's kind of what the record's also trying to tap into all right we're visiting here with freelance whales they're playing tonight at chop suey and a couple things real quick uh on your uh, website you've got a contest going on the diluviogram yeah. contest i see there's a deadline coming up on monday why don't you fill in people <laughs> there's a deadline coming up you got to do your homework this weekend sure yeah well unfortunately man i wish everyone could participate in it but we just did this thing where we had people sign up for this thing and um randomly like i think 500 or a thousand names were chosen to just receive this little package from us in the mail and part of it was the sticker and we asked people to affix it to some place that was meaningful to them and to kind of describe to us why it might be meaningful. So it's cool because now there's this website with all these pictures up there um, and all these kind of like very personal little anecdotes from people as to why they put the sticker there. And some of them are really impressive. There's this, you know, there's this, like this rock climber guy that like free climbed some sort of mountain and then, like put it at the top of it. and. Um, there's like lots of little cool narratives behind a lot of them. It's kind of nice to see where people can um, put together things that are uh, really important or a part of their life and also what they're getting from you guys with your music. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is the Astral Lark Home Planetarium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that one. Um, the Astral Lark Home Planetarium is a product that we designed with. Dr. Bleep of Bleep Labs, who's a man who um, usually makes these cool little um, analog synthesizers and noisemakers. Um, but what he did for us is he made sort of like a light projection thing that takes in sound, hopefully our record. We, we packaged it with our record. So when people uh, that buy this package get our record, they can put the record on and turn on this little home planetarium system and it listens to the record with you and it kind of responds to the sound um, with the light projection. It's like actually a fairly simple, crude little thing, but it creates a really pretty little visual effect and you can spin it around and it looks like you know, kind of like the universe is kind of spinning in your bedroom a little bit. Yeah, I just like seeing people come up with new ideas to do things with their music. And yeah. I wanted to hear somebody say Dr. Bleep on the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Freelance Whales are playing tonight at Chop Suey. Are you ready for a couple of more songs? Sure thing, absolutely. This one's called Aeolus. Circuit boards and spaceships Not 
Thank you very much. You've been listening to live music here at KEXP from Freelance Wales. Again, the new album is Deluvia and playing tonight at Chop Suey. Thanks so much for being here this afternoon. It's a pleasure. And a big thank you to our engineer, Julian. It's 90.3 KEXP Seattle. KEXP comes from the University of Washington Alumni Association presenting Dog Dash.